welcome to those who are in the room today at the IAS and also those who are joining us online. It is delightful that you have been able to come here and, and to join us uh, for what we're expecting to be a really exciting um, talk today from Jorge Beltramini, who is joining us, um, as you can see, as a theme leader uh, of the Clean Energy Catalysis Group from Queensland University of Technology. Uh, Jorge has, has come to us as a fellow and I will shortly turn over to John Wagner in, um, chemi from Chemical Engineer, a colleague of ours, to do a more close uh, uh, introduction um, and to say a few words about how wonderful it's been to host Jorge while he's been here. But um, from my perspective, I am the uh, Director of the Institute of Advanced Studies and this is a really exciting conversation that we're going to be able to host today. For those of you who are joining online and are maybe not necessarily familiar with the Zoom webinar format, though I guess we are all becoming increasingly um, familiar with this, please let me note that the, at the bottom of the page, if you go to the bottom, you can see both a Q&A function as well as a chat function. You are very much encouraged to use either or both of these chat more obviously for discussion points or things that you might wish to feed in to the conversation and the dialogue and the questions after q a for more direct questions the hosts and the panelists can see the questions we will ensure that those are fed in to the live conversation that will happen in in the space um, at the end of uh, professor beltramini's talk so please do use both of those functions and be aware that we will be able to see them and we'll be able to monitor them i always say as i as i as it is my want to say we are um uh, also recording the talk, but we will not be recording and or um, keeping any Q&A or chat um, from individuals. So uh, obviously we wouldn't have GDPR uh, approval to do so, but more, more to the point, we um, uh, will record the talk and we will therefore be able to post that on our website um, for the Institute of Advanced Studies following this so that if you want to refer back to it, you can do so. Um, again, we don't maintain any other things, um, uh, any other material that is not our data to, to maintain. Um, also, we do reserve the right, should anyone be in any way offensive in the chat or in the discussion, not that I am assuming or hoping that anything will happen in that way, but we do maintain the right to um, eject people from the Zoom space uh, should there be any any um, difficulties in, in the conversation. But having said those, having said those things, it is my great, great pleasure to welcome our very distinguished guest and to turn to my colleague, John Wagner, who is going to do a um, very brief introduction from here. So with that said, please enjoy yourselves and we look forward to a really delightful conversation today. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you very much, Marsha. And um, yeah, welcome um, very much, uh, George, to our talk, um, which I'm looking forward to. Um, it was a really nice experience to finally meet you in person because um, I've heard a lot of good things from Swati, who's, who's my postdoc and who did her PhD over in Queensland University um, a few years ago. Um, we've had a really nice um, couple of weeks. It, it's unfortunately coming to the end, um, but we've had a nice talk um, last Tuesday where uh, George was um, presenting all the work that is happening in the um, um, agriculture and bioeconomy space um, um, a group at the university. And then yesterday we had a, a much more detailed um, keynote lecture on a, a, a showcase for our mini CDT where George was talking about the, the advances they've done in catalysis. Um, and a lot of the work that, that um, uh, he was presenting is, is the kind of um, areas we want to, to move into and expand here. Um, and it's uh, really inspiring to, to kind of see where we're hoping to be um, in, in the next few years. So, so um, thank you very much for coming and the uh, uh, floor is over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, John. Thank you very much also for your invitation. I, I know that we were discussing in the last month and one year, uh, uh, the, the possibility to have this this sort of meeting. And thank you, IIS, for uh, giving me the possibility to the visiting scholar being here these last two weeks, that there was something of a different, it was magnificent because interaction with the student, interaction with the staff, and try to reach 
common sense in, in the different aspects of research that we have also common areas that we are doing and see how we can solve the future, the future of the energy, the future of the chemical industry, and also to say the future of the world. Uh, I would like to talk today about the conversion of a lignocellulose material, mainly waste, into marketable products. So, I gave, as John mentioned, two, uh, two seminars. One was an introduction of our center, and the second one was more into the catalytic process and the catalysis that we do in order to achieve this goal. The presentation today is going into some practical applications that at the end of the day, we, uh, we can do with the industry as a partner and making also into new, into new break, uh, breakthrough process and new type of material that we can develop using renewables. I will give a brief... How do... I will give a, a brief introduction of where I come. I come in, I already did that in the previous talk, but for the sake of people that are just uh, listening now, I come in from, from Australia, from Queensland, the state of Queensland, and preferentially in Queensland from Brisbane. Um, Brisbane is a very dynamic city. In Brisbane, we have three universities and we have very beautiful beaches that are closed from the north and from the south. We have the motto, beautiful one day, perfect the next. And this is the environment of our life in, in this beautiful city. From Brisbane, I'm based, oh, I'm based at the, at the Queensland University of Technology. Previously, I was with the University of Queensland for more than 30 years until my early retirement but I will not consider early retirement because still I'm moving on with my ideas and, and performing this sort of activity. The Queensland University of Technology is one of the newest universities and they have nearly 48,000 students. The students are coming from nearly 120 countries. So we have a large student population from around the world. And the university is well placed in the ranking of the university in Australia. In that university, I work into the strategy to create a sustainable world. What we have the idea at the university is that not one entity will solve the problem that we are facing now. And we need to solve environmental problems, social problem, industrial problem, economical problem, and also cultural. If we don't understand the culture of the population, it will be very difficult then to put everything together and to get, get uh, an improvement for the society and also for the industry. And we said also in the way that we conduct the life of every day. In that reason, we have an integration that we said individual, government and technology need to work together. And it's the refitting interaction between the three of them is how we can approach the solution of the problem that we have every day. This idea coming from one sustainable development conference at the United Nations, that the government create policies, but these policies need to be implemented by the population and the industry. And the industry with new process also, we ask the government to create a new policy in order to run down that particular idea. And that all in the benefit not only individual government and technology, but in the environment. That is the way that we can create a better environment in the future. So then at QT, we have a group that is called Bioenergy, Bioprocessing and Industrial Biotechnology. And you can see there, this group is working in many different areas, but it's working in coordination. So we have a group that will be take the feedstock of the renewable material, how to improve how supply, the, the chain supply need to be addressed, all of these particular issues. And then we have the conversion issues, why that we are processing sugars. That is a very important industry in Queensland, the sugar cane industry. That is why it's a group dedicated completely to improve the quality of this industry from the plantation of the sugar, of the sugar plant to going into the milling and then to going to the process. Then we have the biofuel, the biochemicals, and then with all of that, we study the different process that will be possible to achieve a beta conversion 
of this material into the desired product of the community. What we do, okay, normally what we do here is we try to create new chemical, but to create new chemical, we need to know what are the goals of the sustainability. We need to achieve those goals. And if we like to create new industry, we need to create innovative solution because that is the only way that we attract market. But to attract market, we need to have a translation of the technology. In that case, we need to be practical. If that particular, if that particular idea can be translated into reality. And that is when we design for energy efficient, fast track, and we use chemical catalytic process that is our main focus. And the overall idea is at the end of the day, replace petroleum based products by using renewable feedstock. That will take time. This is not a, a, a solution in the next 10 years. Probably will take 30, 40 years in order that we can achieve that. And especially in Australia, we need to change the mentality. Australia is a coal based country and still 75% of electricity is produced by coal. So changing that mentality will take time, but only if we can be practical and we can translate a new technology that can be then be the replacement for the old ideas. We know that biomass is an alternative and uh, everybody knows that biomass is the largest source of renewable uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the, in the world. And especially biomass is neutral, carbon dioxide neutral at the end of the day, at the, at the end of the life cycle analysis. And biomass is diverse everywhere in the world. We can say that biomass will be abound in any part of the world and it's not any strategic part of the world that we concentrate and say the biomass is my product and it cannot be used for another person because biomass is intense. So biomass can be used, but we know that at the moment, the amount of biomass used as a renewable energy is very low. So practically biomass that we use, the, that 6% of renewable energy from the biomass, the 47% is used to burn in the biomass, to produce electricity on some sort of energy. So biomass is not properly utilized. On the other hand, we know that biomass have a very difficult chemical structure. There are different components. The three main components are the cellulose, the hemicellulose, and the lignin. In the cellulose, the most recalcitrant material in the structure is cellulose is composed of C6 sugar, mainly glucose. The hemicellulose is the amorphous part that will be linked the cellulose with the lignin. And then we have the lignin that is mainly aromatic compounds. It's said that the lignin is the largest source of aromatic in the world. If we can deconvolute this this linkage, we can produce another petrochemical industry based on lignin. And this is one of the great challenges. With all of that, we see that during the last 30 years, biomass evolved in different way. We have what we call the first generation that mainly 20 years ago, everybody was trying to produce fuel through, through crops, especially cereal, starch, sugar, and oil crops. This material are used for the food consumption. The problem was that they disrupt completely the, the food change. And that is what is more create higher prices in food because the farmer view, view the opportunity at that time to sell this crop to the uh, fuel companies in order to create biofuels like ethanol and uh, biodiesel, for example. So that evolves into a second generation that we are starting using the waste. In the second generation, is, we say practically everything of biomass that can be used as a food, we don't touch and we use only waste. And that the waste then was generated from municipal waste, industrial waste, any sort of waste that it was created can be studied and see if they have the transformation. That second generation is evolving now into the cell where all those algae is incorporated as a biomass. That is another source very important. And what is more important, the fourth generation that will be coming very soon and is starting now being manifested is when we can specifically design microorganisms. We can specifically design enzymes, we can specifically design a particular yeast that genetically modifies the engineering crop and algae that can produce a particular set of chemicals. So this is how the biomass is evolving 
in this century now. So from here, we said biomass waste, another type of waste. Yes, that is what we are doing at the moment. We tackle many of the problem using all sorts of waste. This is also construction waste, as you see there, and also all the discarded furniture that can be converted into a more valuable product. That is what we want to use. What is, do, is doing at the moment? At the moment, practically all of this material, only 2% is transformed, the other 98% is burned. It burns as an energy. But the question is, is biomass effective as an energy material to produce electricity? And as you can see, biomass have a very low efficiency value. So the energy efficiency for converted into electricity is the lowest for the renewable material. Being the wind, geothermal, hydro, nuclear, and solar uh, in a beta condition. Although biomass is better than the non renewable fossil fuels, but still is a long way to compete with another renewable. For that reason, one of the key questions is is probably biomass is more well placed in order to be converted into valuable product rather than burn and produce electricity. If we like to do that, we need to take choices. And um, one of the questions is that in the total weight of the lignocellulosis biomass is not one fit, one side that fit all the conditions. So here we need to study what we want to do. And the economy will play a big role. How to make a decision if we like to produce biofuel or we can to produce biochemicals. What are the factors that will help determination? It's probably that will be mainly the factor of the society in which that particular plant will be fit. Not every country will we have the same condition and the same aim in the transformation. And can we use the technique? What are the type of process that we need to use? At the end of the day, what we like to do is to accelerate technological marketability, to reach the market very, very fast by solving more than one problem at once. That is meaning we have a particular biomass and it's possible to convert into different variety of products at the same time. This is one of the idea, or the other idea is to take different biomass feed, feed stock and see which one is the best suitable for converting to a particular niche of product. So, then is the relation that always we analyze between product value and volume. In product value and volume, normally, if you're going for commodity, you got, you will have low value product, but you need to have greater volume. It's totally different if you're going into the pharmaceutical industry, where we need to have this bioactive new chemical to produce a new pharmaceutical drug, where there the volume is very small because we, we need very high purity, but the price is very high. So into that particular boundary is how you determine at the end of the day if you can get into marketability with your idea. One of the big issues is if we like to produce still similar fuels and chemicals that we are doing now, you see here into the left, that this is everything that we know how to do it for the last hundred years. This is how the oil industry and the refining and petrochemical operate. They know how to control, they know the catalysis, they know the condition. And you can see here that we like to replace these two, the, the, the fuels and the chemical, and we like to use biomass. We are first condition is we have totally different feedstock. This is a liquid, that is a solid. This one have not oxygen, that one have up to 40% oxygen. So we have a total different set of condition. So we are operating here with different reactions. We are operating here with different reactors. So the configuration will be totally different because here we need to reduce first the oxygen. We need to eliminate oxygen. The only way to eliminate oxygen is having hydrogen. So we need to produce hydrogen. Many of the process that we use are batch. So we need to work like industry-like in a continuous way because the idea is to reuse a refinery is in place now and to shift from non-renewable into renewable, not to build new plants. And then we need to have different reaction because we need to modify always the molecular way of the final product. We have different product here. So then 
if we like fuel, we need to increase the density of the, of the fuel. So there are a lot of variables that we need to make reality using different conditions and different reactions that are, are at the moment used by the refining industry and also by the chemical industry. So this is a slide that I just put an idea of what we are doing. We take the biomass and from the biomass, we do all the depolymerization and we get into biofuels and also into platform chemicals. So we do hydrolysis in one way. We separate the different fraction. We get the, the lignin. With the lignin, we have our own program that we can get bulk chemicals, resin and plastic. And also we do pyrolysis liquefaction HTL in which we get the bio oil, so we, we get some gas. And the more important here is that also we can obtain hydrogen and this hydrogen will be fit the, the previous part in order to hydrogenate and remove the oxygen necessary to create the new molecules. So in here, then we have different ideas. We do pretreatment, we do value chemicals, valorized lignin. We use thermal process for bio oil and we produce hydrogen from biomass. In the last two lectures, I, I, I gave an idea how to use the liquid phase reforming. Today, I will just touch that one, but I give you another idea how to use gasification. And then we use, we incorporate recently the, the plastic. Plastic is a problem and the tire is a problem. How we can then deconvolute those conditions and produce something that really benefits the market. So I will start very roughly talking quick on the pretreatment. For pretreatment is meaning that we need to deconvolute the biomass in the different fractions, the cellulose, the hemicellulose, and the lignin. And sometimes also the biomass can be treated as a whole, depending on what we want. For that reason, we have different pilot plan that we can set up in the way to disorder the structure using hydrolysis, using uh, a steam explosion and so on, in where the, the, the whole structure of the biomass is disrupted and then we can have a separation. One example of that is we can depolymerize, this is the depolymerization of two different biomass, bagasse and spin effect. As I explained before, spin effect is a grass, it's a grass that grow in the, in the Australian desert and bagasse is just a product from the uh, sugar cane. So from here, if we use a, a setup of acid treatment and ball milling treatment with temperature, we can get the separation in the different phase. We can separate the lignin on one side, the cellulose and the hemicellulose, and that then can be treated separately. This is just some result, quick result that we see the, the biomass now that was insoluble because all the insolubility of the cellulose and part of the lignin also can now be transformed into a soluble fraction that here can be treated in a continuous reactor. And for example, after the, the removal of the lignin and the hemicellulose, the carbohydrate part directly from the biomass can be converted into alcohol, sugar alcohol, sorbit or mannitol that then can benefit the food industry. So this is, for example, one application. The second application is valuable chemical from carbohydrate. The other day I mentioned the cotton waste. Cotton is a very important industry in, in Australia and it's a lot of waste from, from cotton, the cotton gin trash we call, that is where the cotton is placed and all the plant of the cotton that is, is cut during the harvest and produce a lot of waste. This waste we saw that it's possible to be reused. And one of the chemicals that we are looking is the CMF. CMF is chloromethylfuran and is similar to the HMF, but it's more stable. And this CMF then can be converted into any chemical or can be converted into fuel. The main idea here is to have a continuous process where we have a flow reactor, we treat the cellulose rich from the gene trash with hydrochloric acid, then do a separation by a solvent and then obtain the crude CMF the solvent and the acid can be recycled and then the product then can be refitted in that way. So if we obtain a good CMF, 
Then the idea is with the CMF, we can convert into isobenzofuran, and from the isobenzofuran, we can obtain any particular product. I put just that slide as an explain in, in one of my talk. The main idea here was to obtain this product. This is an antidepressant. And it's a large pharma in Australia that is interesting to obtain this product for their own particular then pharmaceutical drug that will be cure depression. So it's a big market. And we see that we can produce not now from a chemical process that have a lot of corrosive uh, solvent in order to produce this particular chemical, but we can use from a very simple trash that is coming from the cotton plant. In the same way, we can produce flavor, plasticizer, or adhesive. We see here the possibility when I said the marketability. So we need to, to independently then investigate this market and how this market will, will be react. It's the same way that was in the case done before with the biodiesel that you have a 10% glycerol and the people were asking what we do with this glycerol. One of the problems was to put the glycerol back in the market because you disrupt the commodity prices, yes. But not in this case because this is a niche production. But also with the cotton gene trash, what we do is we, we treat we do an, an acid pretreatment and carbonization, and then we create a carbon. We create a particular carbon structure here that will be consist of ar aromatic layer that will be rearranged in different structure, and then the distance between the aromatic layer will be give the possibility to the carbon to have activities and to have functionality. And depending the treatment that we do to the carbon is what we get this aromatic layer could be protonated or not, and the functionality joined by a ring function between them. Why we do that? Because then we like to study a reaction, and this can be used as a catalyst. We see here that from one particular chemical, that one particular waste, that is the cotton gene trash, you can get a chemical and you can get a material that can be reused to create another sort of reaction. The second example, this is a new activity that we're doing, is the production of xylose oligomers. So here we like to produce prebiotic using hemicellulose, okay? There is a lot of work with cellulose at the moment, and uh, not much with the hemicellulose. To produce probiotic, you need to get this compound, and the current industry is using enzymatic approach and are also using acid system that also produce waste. Our idea is if we can then decrease the, the polymer of, of the hemicellulose in, in short term, we can then cut in the probiotics that we need. And these probiotics are very good because our dietary swing in low calorie food and also for the consumption of individuals with diabetes. It's something that they, is very much a demand and it's a very large market on that. So the idea then here is take the hemicellulose. The hemicellulose is mainly xylose. This is a change of xylose. And get into this range of compound, especially the four, five, and six are the three compounds that are more important for the probiotic. But how we can get that? Okay, the idea was why we not use plasma treatment? We need to produce an activated carbon with the function, acidity function, in order be moderate acidity in order to break down that molecule of, of the hemicellulose and get the selectivity high for this three compound. One student came with the idea to use plasma technology. And we said to him, okay, if you do plasma treatment into the carbon, and then you do the acidification of the carbon, put the acid to the carbon, we see what we can get. We can create sulfonic group in the carbon, and then that will give the acidity correct to break the 1,4 uh, uh, bond into the sugars and then create the probiotic that we need. So at the end of the day, this is an example. This is the control, the activated carbon, and this is the plasma treated. And if you see here, still we are away ahead. We produce nearly 50% selectivity of the probiotic with a total conversion of 65. Still is not good enough, but we are working on that. And at the moment, what we're trying is to mix the activated carbon that with, uh, with, another, with another materials in order to create 
a different structure and probably more close to mesoporosity in order to get better selectivity. So this is a project that is going on. This is another idea in order to get value marketable. Okay, we saw biomass, we saw carbohydrate, we're going into lignin. Lignin valorization. Lignin is one of the most important fractions of the biomass. It's up to between 30, 40 percent, depending on the type of biomass, if it's grassy or is or is wood. So we know that the lignin in Australia, especially, two percent is only extracted and it's getting as a chemical. The rest is burned for energy. Why? Because it's more easy. Yes, you can produce electricity, but it's efficient. No, it's not efficient. So the idea is if we treat the lignin and we treat the lignin very well, one of the big issues is how we can break the bonding, how we can break into these aromatics. If we can do that, then we can create a platform chemistry because we can produce monomers and some polymers and some aromatic ester that will be contribute then to the creation of another product. We studied the situation here and we saw that there are two types of lignin. One is the natural lignin directly from the plant and the other one is the technical lignin that is very abundant because of the industry that produces this lignin. You have the pulp and paper industry that produce the majority of this lignin and we have from them different products. You have the craft, the organosolf, you have the lignin sulfonated, and then there are low purity lignin that are produced when people like to obtain only carbohydrate, those lignin then chemically treated are very, very bad and low purity condition. So that mainly go into energy. So the idea is here, how we can get use of that. So the fair idea was, okay, we take the natural lignin, and for the natural lignin, we study one particular bond, the beta O4. And the beta O4 bond is one of the most important bond in lignin, but it's one of the most difficult to break. If I break the beta O4, I break practically the other structure of the lignin. So I get too many components, it's not useful. So through a study, what we came to the conclusion is, the problem is with that bond dissociation enthalpy, okay? This is the original bond dissociation enthalpy of the beta O4. And what about if close to the beta O4 in the position alpha, we do a selective oxidation. We oxidize that oxidrile over there. Then if we do that selective oscillation with a particular catalyst, so we can reduce dramatically that one. So the amount of energy that you need to put here to break this bond will be not modified the other ones. So will we, will we do a good cleavage? So what we use, okay, we prepare a catalyst based on titanium nitrate and supported on, on copper, co with copper support. So using this catalyst, we have the right functionality in order to attack that bone. And at the end of the day, working with individual compounds here, we see that we can produce very selective uh, ester like the vinylene and also the the hydro hydroxyethyl guayacol. When we compare the oxidized lignin with the non-oxidized lignin, also you can have here in this particular table, that you can see that the total amount of aromatic monomer that we produce is practically nearly 60%, compared only to 12% when the lignin is not treated, is not oxidized that particular function. Why? Because at that particular function, the total amount of polymer and dimer, dimeric and trimeric oligomer is very high because they break in any way. And that will be very difficult to do. So in that part, with, that, with this principle then, we said, all right, what is in the literature and what is in the industry? So we know very well the lignin stabilization strategy that I mentioned the other day. This is a two-step strategy. You separate here the lignin, but you sacrifice the carbohydrate fraction. The carbohydrate fraction will be destroyed. The problem here you use for that as a solvent formaldehyde, that is a very risky chemical. And we need also to work with very two-step approach. We need to, to inject hydrogen that is very expensive and we need to use catalyst that are based on routine, that is very expensive material also. So the idea here was 
create with the principle of the, of the partial oxidation creates a strategy. And what we start in working is what we call the lean infer strategy. One is catalytic step, so one reaction step, we separate the phenolic compound, the lignin monomers, to the carbohydrate fraction. We don't use hydrogen as a gas, we use air, we use oxygen from the air. And still here, we have a very high monomer yield. We can retain the cellulose and the hemicellulose that can be then fermented and converted into sugar. And the, the more important thing, what industry like is only one step approach. How we can justify this? This is our the result. You see here, we work with different catalysts and no catalysts. And the total aromatic yield and the aromatic ester, the H and the G ester is very high. And also here, we use the oxygen. We don't use hydrogen. Why is important the oxygen here? Very simple, because the oxygen, we found that enhanced the fractionation of the process. The oxygen allowed to remove the hemicellulose. And it's also here that the oxidation of the alcohol, to, we produce hydrogen radicals. How do we produce hydrogen radicals? Because in the close uh, position to the palladium, we produce a spillover, that the spillover of hydrogen is produced hydrogen into an, atomic, into an atomic entity that will clean the surface of the palladium and keeping the catalyst working for a long time. So we reduce the cooking of the catalyst. This is the mechanism, just as an illustration, we see here how we remove the hemicellulose at the beginning, and then the different step, how it's affected the beta O bonding in order to create this aromatic monomer and the G and the H ester. Effect of biomass type here, we can use any type of biomass, but we see that it's very important that the bagas and the trash are the two more beta than the rice and the straw because of the concentration of the G and H ester in the original lignin. So this is also the composition of the lignin, natural lignin is very important in order if we like to apply in a process like this. And what is important at the end of the day that we confirm that the production of the G and H ester, uh, ferulic acid and the curimaric acid, so are more important with the bagasse and the trash. The phenolic concentration is larger than in the other variation that we study of the lignin. With respect here to the hemicellulose, we produce the monosugar, ethylated and methylated sugar, that at the end of the day, this sugar can be very easy hydrolyzed by en enzyme and enzymatic hy hydrolysis. We can produce the particular sugar that we want. This is the example of production from the cellulose, the glucose, or the cellulose from the hemicellulose. We see here that rounding, just be selecting in one particular bonding, we can deconvolute the, the biomass into the lignin fraction and the carbohydrate fraction. So it's a win-win situation in which the three fraction then can be put value into a commercial product. And this, at the end of the day, is the idea to have an integrated biorefinery. You have the, the grass biomass, you do the lignin fair approach, you have the aromatic ester, you have the, 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 sugar, the hemicellulose for the sugar, you do the separation, you have a solid residue, you can produce a carbon catalyst for that, you do the fermentation, you produce biofuel chemicals in which we involve also the sugar. The story is totally different if we have technical leaning. With the technical leaning, the technical leaning are coming mainly from the industry. So alkaline hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis, solvent based hydrolysis produce the variety of leaning. And in this variety of leaning, the big problem is that we can produce the monomer because they already, the beta of all bonding is already removed. So we don't have a good idea or here a good proportion in order to do the breaking. So here we have a more polymeric lignin. What was the idea here? Okay, this one will be very difficult to go into a chemical process. So with this lignin, we have with the idea of cleavage and couple. So break it and join. Why is that? If we can do that very easily to cleave the lignin, 
the leaning is like in you break a piece of, bre of bread in three parts and then you join the bread where you like. For example, I make different sandwich. Here is the same idea. Then at the end of the day, what we did is we create polymers. And here we have one application. This is one of the waterproof leaning coating. So that was created at the university. That was created using the university pilot plan. And we have the license for a leaning based coating and the license is to the leaf company for resources. So this is the world first fully recyclable waterproof paper based on technical leaning. We see here, here we are not going into a particular chemical. Here we're going into a particular application, some product that can be of benefit. So, and we are continuing doing coating trials with different companies because we are using different leaning composition. So, and at the moment we're trying to develop leaning based paint. It's coming, it's getting one of the biggest uh, paint company in the country that they want to start manufacturing using leaning as a base, their own painting. So the paint can be developed in that way. We can then replace the chemical that we are using at the moment. And this is just a demonstration idea that I also presented the other day that we can produce fire retardant, fuel additive, nanotube, resin, polyurethane using this particular idea with the technical leaning. Okay, we have the leaning valorization. I will just go in quicker with the thermal fractionation. The thermal fractionation mainly we use for the waste that is coming from the sewage manure municipal waste and also from gas from the steel mill. Yesterday I explained very clearly how with the steel mill gas we can produce ethanol. So for the other trees also we can use different different process. We can use hydrothermal liquefaction, carbonization, pyrolysis. We can do hydrothermal gasification, low temperature hydrolysis, solvolysis, and we also do some trial on photocatalysis. For that, we have pilot plan. This is our two uh, showing of the pilot plan. The one is for hydrolysis. The other one is for the HTL. They are totally controlled. And we have an operation up to 250 bar. And we can reach a temperature nearly 350. And very large resident time. And we have a tubular reactor also. And we can process 10 liters per hour of stock. So it's a very large plant. The same, we have a supercritical solvent extraction facility when we need to extract the different solvent then that we use in order of the separation on the different fraction. As I mentioned, solvolysis is one way to treat the biomass. If we use solvolysis, is when instead of water you use a solvent. In that case, we do solvolysis with, for example, ethylene glycol. And depending on the condition that we use, we can stop at one particular time, we can use obtain acid, why that we can obtain furanic compound, or we can dedicate the unit in order to obtain a particular compound using the correct catalyst. This is an example of eucalyptus stillage. This is a bio oil that we produce from thousand kilos of that material we produce 720 kilos bio oil, 270 kilos of gas, and 120 kilos organic acid. The three fraction can be reused. And what is important is that this is the composition of the bio oil. We do the fractionation and we get a diesel type. We are using a cheap magnetic catalyst. This is also we file a provisional patent. And what is more important is from the ICOS phase, we can treat it, we can remove the fraction of the organic acid, mainly and the oxygenated carbon compound by using the ICOS phase reforming and we can obtain hydrogen that the hydrogen can be recirculated into the bio oil to reduce more the amount of the oxygen. And this is, when we obtain the bio oil, is the bio oil is not used complete immediately, the bio oil is not stable. So we use also to improve the bio oil stability by using different solvents. 
We done study with glycerol, water, and water ethanol in order to improve the stability for longer time. So that is meaning we can store the bio oil that we produce at one particular time, and then the bio oil be hydro processed when it's convenient. So that is give stability to the bio oil. And we landfill, as I explained also in the, in the first seminar with the landfill gas, what we do is landfill gas is CO2 and methane. So are the two more contaminant gas in the atmosphere. If we do dry reforming, we can produce synthesis gas. With the synthesis gas, we can produce ethanol or methanol. We can, we can go to fissure trough. We will not go into fissure trough, but the idea is to produce a very simple plant that can be transported at the back of a truck and go into the landfill where for the life of the, that landfill, converting the zinc gas is a two reactor plant in one converting to the zinc gas, pressurize the zinc gas and go into methanol. And this is the plan that I, I show you. We have the demonstration with IACT in, in India where we produce the zinc gas and then from the zinc gas, we're going to produce DME. That is the dimethyl ether that is used in, the, in, in a village for the main consumption of energy and cooking. So the thing, and, and also you can generate electricity. So this is our very practical application of waste material. At the end of the day, the opportunities are enormous. So you have the waste, you produce the synthesis gas, and we know from the chemical industry that from synthesis gas, you can go anywhere. So the only thing that we need to change is mainly the feed. We don't need to use any more a non-renewable material. We can use the renewable and the waste, especially in order to convert into the product that we mainly target because it's the necessity of our space. Just quick on hydrogen production. I, we refer a lot this week and last week on hydrogen from aquifer reforming of biomass. This is a reaction that is working in the liquid phase, mainly to clean or to produce hydro from contaminated slash. Could be municipal slash, could be pharmaceutical slash, could be industrial slash. Any slash that contain a variety of chemicals can be clean the water and can be produced hydrogen from that and also can be the water reuse. That is very important due to the scarcity of water, especially in Australia. This is the cartoon that I demonstrate that what we are working now mainly is in a new route from direct, directly the biomass into the hydrogen because we have the experience into the sugar, going to the sugar alcohol in the hydrogen. Combining the, these three steps, we try now to produce directly the, the, from the waste the hydrogen. And one way to use is also the technical link. We are starting doing experimentation with that. At the end of the day, this is the crazy idea that we have is to produce electricity. So if we have, if we can make some device that we have the polysaccharide or we have the waste, we can put into a system, gas liquid system that we can produce hydrogen and gases. We have a separation of the of the gases, we purify the hydrogen, we put in a hydrogen fuel cell and produce electricity. This is one of the ideas that we have, to create this sort of system for remote areas that they can generate their own electricity. At the same time, the modification of that is to produce, a, is to put a, a sort of system that can store the hydrogen and the hydrogen is then used for the electricity when it's needed. So this is, this is an idea coming from one student. You, it looks crazy, but it looks possible also. The other way to produce hydrogen is using novel membrane reforming gasification reactor. Why we are using that? We are using that because we did a very large project with Saudi Aramco, that is a national uh, oil company in Saudi Arabia. That was a fire project. They, they want to convert waste oil, everything that coming from the oil, into hydrogen because they need hydrogen in the refineries. And they commissioned us, they want to work with a membrane, okay? A membrane reactor. The idea was that we need to, this is the idea 
condition of the gasification. But if we can put everything in one place, we can create what we call a catalytic membrane reactor that we do all the process together into one. And we can shift the hydrogen, we remove the hydrogen and shift the equilibrium producing more hydrogen. So this was a crazy project, but at the end of the day, we construct the membrane, the catalytic membrane. And as a result of that, you see, you have six patents. So the company patent the idea, patent the process and patent the catalyst. So we have the IP protection all, all, on all of that. So the main idea was from laboratory scale, very small membrane into the realization 1.4 meter membrane that can be used for the production of the hydrogen and also the separation of the hydrogen. So at the same time, we studied the production of the hydrogen, we studied how we can permeate only hydrogen from the gases, the composition of the gases that we were obtaining. And this is the design. This is what I can show because it's protected. And we see here that we have a membrane that is alumina tube. It was alpha alumina. They have a coating of gamma alumina and then we put co different coating of silica. The different coating of silica give the porosity enough order to separate the hydrogen. But in meanwhile, into the coating of silica, we put the metal active part of the catalyst. So the membrane was doing, the catalysis was done in the membrane and the separation was done in the membrane. It was a big challenge because we need to study diffusion reaction and then the separation of the hydrogen. That is quite difficult approach. And this is just the membrane constructed. And we see here the membrane tube. This is for the pilot plant. This is a cross section of the membrane, the different layers. And that is uh, a drawing of that membrane. That is what the design of the membrane using a particular uh, software. And at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we created this sort of membrane that constructed in Australia and shipped to Saudi Arabia for the pilot plant. And we can see this. We study the condition of the mass the hydrogen at different states of the membrane, and we see here the separation, great separation of hydrogen through the membrane. So it's possible, so and it's possible to do with biomass. So we are trying to experiment now to biomass. So a very heavy fraction of biomass to produce the nimify the fuel oil that can be from a uh, a particular slash or a particular very high fraction of a bio oil can be converted using this approach into hydrogen. And the last part is just five minutes, the hydrogen from plastic and chemical from plastic is a big problem, not only in Australia, everywhere. And at the moment, plastic is not reprocessed and plastic is only partially recycled, only 5%. And what we see here is it's happening in Europe, it's happening here, it's happening in the US everywhere. So we need to do something. One of the big problems with the plastic is the sorting. Plastic is not only one composition, there is a variety. And this is one of the first problems that we need to solve. How much plastic we do physical circular economy and how much plastic we do chemical circular economy. That is meaning how much we can just turn back into the market and how much we need to destroy, produce a new polymer or whatever or, or, or anything in order to discard by a, a chemical treatment. So the idea here came in 2020. I started working in this project in Japan. Then the COVID came, but still they are working on that. I hope to return soon to continue working on that. The idea is take the waste plastic in one first stage, do a pyrolysis using a catalysis, a mesopor of catalyst, get gases, different composition. And in a second stage, by cracking and reforming, where we incorporate a metal, obtain hydrogen. They want hydrogen because they are focused mainly in hydrogen. So, and then carbon structure. The carbon structure can be used for different, for different approach, for absorption, catalysis, also for uh, another electronic application like batteries. We did some result and 
a result, the carbon that we produce is globular and whisker, and that is the TPO of the carbon that we are forming, and then the sort of carbon uh, compound, that liquid compound, and the gases. So we still they are working on this. Uh, it's working at microwave condition in order to obtain more easy compounds and more shorter reaction time, but we plan to go into fixed reactor. And the last one is with the tire. Yeah? We just heard when I was here, when we arrived last week, that that plan is commissioning now in order to work. And as you see, they are producing a large quantity of carbon. They produce liquid as a hydrocarbon for the marine ship in the for the for the marine of Australia. And they planning to have a contract with the US Marine in order to supply marine fuel. But the problem is they produce nearly 40% of carbon. That is waste. And nobody can throw that carbon because it's contaminated. So the idea here is mainly do the carbonization of this carbon, but before do uh, do an acid wash where we can remove the impurity. And in that removal of the impurity, we remove mainly the silica and the zinc, and that done by a mineral treatment process, acidic and base, and one step on two step, and at the end of the day, we can get functionalized carbons that can be used also in catalysis. And as you see here, we can do hydrogen story application, or either we do catalytic process. So that is the reaction to produce lactones. So from levulinic acid. So, and the other one is just initial experimentation with hydrogen storage. So this is another particular interesting application. Give value to that carbon. The other idea is to transform the carbon into graphene, very low quality graphene, and the graphene can be turned it into construction material. Okay, th this is the conclusion now. Biofuels, bioproduct industry is very small at the moment, but we have the capacity for that increase. We need to include the private sector. If we don't engage the, pri the private sector, it will be very, very difficult that we can reach a successful outcome. And this stock is available everywhere, so it's not an excuse. We have biomass and waste stock worldwide. So the, for me, the potential is great. And because this never will end. And one of the important things is develop R&D and maintain the cooperation between the industry. But before maintaining the cooperation and the industry, the great cooperation is coming between the research institution. So the work of isolated is not anymore. Now it's the work of integration. And for that is that we need to show to the government that collective vision. If we like to engage the government. We not need to go and knock the door of the government individual. We need to work collectively and say, this is the solution, support. And then the industry will come. And in the last one is our idea for hydrogen and fuel. This is the fit, waste, do HTL, ATG, depending on the fit that you use, produce the biochar, biochar for any particular application, fertilizer, catalyst support, energy storage material, produce gas, by oil and the water fraction. From the water fraction, produce hydrogen. From the zinc gas, use a membrane separation, produce hydrogen, put the oil fraction into HDO, hydro deoxygenation, reduce the oxygen with the hydrogen you produce and the biofuel to the market. Otherwise, if you have an excess in hydrogen, put into the consumer also. This is the vision that we have in a block construction. Yes. Is challenging and but if we not challenge ourselves i think we cannot succeed and this is our persons group individual and international collaborator and funding agency that supported and still support all of this program and that's it thank you any question